kids, welcome back to Kid Time at Golden Prairie Community Church. I always say that. We're learning more about the Bible and the people in the Bible and things about God. And today I'm going to teach you something about Abraham's grandson named Jacob. We've talked about Abraham. We've talked about Isaac and how when he was born, they laughed because they were so joyful that they had a son. Well, Isaac had actually two boys. They were twins. Esau was the older twin and Jacob was the younger twin. Now, of course, there's not a lot of difference between twins' ages. They're just a few minutes, but Jacob was the second one. So I'm going to teach you about Jacob today. Now, Jacob wasn't the best person when he was younger. He lied. He cheated. He deceived. He stole. In that culture in those days, the oldest one got extra money for, as an inheritance. Why? Because they were the ones who were responsible for taking care of the parents when they got old, so they needed extra money to take care of the parents. Esau was older. He was supposed to get the, the extra inheritance. Jacob cheated him out of it. And Jacob cheated him out of the blessing, too. And then Esau was mad, and Jacob was scared. And Jacob decided it was time for him to leave and go away for quite a while because he was very worried about Esau. At this point, they were young men. And so if Esau was really mad, he had the power to do some nasty things. And Jacob left. He decided to go back where Abraham had come from, and he was going to go back to Haran and see if he could find a wife up there. And on his way... In Genesis 28, it says, Jacob left Beersheba, which was the place that he and his dad and brother and mother were living, and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place, and he stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. He's traveling, he didn't have much with him, so he put a stone instead of a pillow. Pretty hard pillow, but that's what he did. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Angels of God going up and down this ladder. And behold, the Lord stood above it, at the top of it there, and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, your kids, your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back for the, to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Now, isn't that interesting? Jacob knew about the God of Abraham and Isaac, but he didn't really know him personally. And here he is meeting God for the first time personally. And God is giving him the same promises that he gave Abraham and Isaac. Even though Jacob had done wrong things, God loved him enough to say, I am going to take care of you. I am with you. Now, last time we learned about God being so big and huge and outside of time, we called that transcendent. God is also with us. He's surrounding us. He's around us all the time. God is with us. And that, the big word for that, if you like big words, I like big words, so that's why I give it to you. That is imminent, Im. And end. So even though God is big and huge and around, he is with us all the time. And he was with Jacob. And Jacob learned a lot. Jacob learned about how lying and cheating and deceiving hurts people because he was lied to and he was cheated and he was deceived. Over the next number of years, he ended up marrying, he had, he actually had a couple of wives, which we don't do now, and he had 11 kids, 11 sons, I'm not sure how many daughters, at least one, probably a lot more. And eventually he got to the point of saying, I am going to come back home again. And 
on the way home, God met him again. And it says, God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padam Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Jacob actually means deceiver, liar. Israel means he strives with God. He cares about knowing God. He wants to know God. So God called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your body. You're going to have descendants who are kings. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. So he said the same promise again. Years and years later, he said the same promise to him. And this time Jacob knew who he was talking to. He knew God because God is imminent. He knew he's around him at all the time. You know, we all have to make our own choice as to whether we're going to trust God and believe God. God sent Jesus 2,000 years ago to come and live and die so that we can be forgiven of our sins. And we all have to make the choice. Are we going to believe that? Are we going to ask Jesus to forgive our sins? Are we going to trust him and follow him with our lives? Each of us has to make that own choice. We can't do it because mom and dad did it. If they did that, that's great. But that doesn't apply to us. Each of us has to make our own decision to do that. And Jacob, well, he learned that God was with him and would promise to be with him always. And God makes that same promise to us. Isn't it wonderful to have a God who, even though he's so big, is also right here. See you next time.